Yo, sup, this is MY3. Today, we're finally getting around to doing the post-maximum crisis series of videos. Now, I realize that these videos have been delayed quite a bit. And in the spirit of rains, this is mainly due to three reasons. Firstly, a lot of my spare time has been used on Duel Links. The World Championship qualifier for Duel Links was just last weekend, and I was playing a lot of that. If anyone's interested in Duel Links, let me know. I could get into making videos for that as well, if people are interested, if not, then it's whatever. Secondly, I was also waiting for the ban list. And thirdly, the current format being a hand trap format with every deck maining between 7 and 13 hand traps has proven itself to be quite difficult to build decks for a combo based deck such as Zephyr Yang Zinx. I've already gone through several dozen combos as well as several dozen different builds and iterations of this deck, simultaneously playing around all of the different hand traps currently being mained and sided has proven itself to be quite difficult. But if I wait any longer, there will be no point in these series of videos, so I'm just going to put out what I have right now. And maybe even those wombo combos that lose to hand trap I could show as well, which might come in handy in a different format, although probably not since Link makes it a whole new ball game for combo decks. But anyways, the whole Zephyr and Yang Zing card pool is here. Maximum Crisis introduced Zephyr War, Zephyr Providence, and Zephyrath. All three are excellent additions to this deck's arsenal. So let's just get into the first combo video. So the most basic of basic Zephyr combos is the two card, two disruption combo. So this requires us to open Zephyrath, and a low scale, or a way to search the Zephyrath or the low scale, such as Zephyr Providence, our new search spell. Now the low scale ideally has to be Zephyr, which is very interesting and directly contradicts our previous mentality, which is, you know, we never want to have Zephyr scales. Zephyr scales are bad. Not only are they vanilla, they also restrict your pendulum summoning to Zephyr only or whatever archetype the Zephyr scale is. But now we actually want two Zephyr scales, so props to Konami's card design here. But the most basic combo is the Zephyrath low scale combo. So with this hand we're going to activate Zephyr Providence to search Oracle of Zephyr because why not get a plus one? And Oracle of Zephyr is going to get to our Zephyrath. Of course if you already had the Oracle of Zephyr in hand, Zephyr Providence would directly search the Zephyrath or whatever scale you need. Next, we're going to activate Zephyrath and use its effect to put Zephyr New into the extra deck and change its own scale to 7. Activate Zephyr Naga, Pendulum Summon, Zephyr New, Zephyr New's effect searches 9 pillars of the Yang Zing. And we're going to go ahead and set that. So this is the most basic Zephyr combo there is. On our opponent's turn, when they activate something, we're going to negate that with 9 pillars, popping Zephyr New. Zephyr New is going to go ahead and search our new trap, Zephyr War, to our hand. Since we have 2 Zephyr scales, we can activate Zephyr War directly from our hand. We pop 1 Zephyr on our side and 1 card on their side. Since it's a trap, it's a spell speed 2 that we can activate on our opponent's turn. A good thing to note here is Zephyr War doesn't have to pop a Zephyr Monster or Zephyr Scale, we can pop field spell oracle of Zephyr. Also since we opened Zephyr Providence it's also another layer of protection for our scales from the graveyard since it can prevent the destruction of a Zephyr card by banishing itself. So from just two cards we generated two disruption and if they don't clear your scales on the very next turn we can snowball into more plays. So you know since Zephyrath's Scale modulation only lasts one turn. Next turn we can put another scale 7 such as Zephraxaton into the extra deck. Become scale 7 again and then we can Pendulum Summon Zephyr New and Zephraxaton. Zephyr New is going to get a search. Zephraxaton is going to be able to pop. If you pop Zephraf and Zephyr New searches another Zephyr you can normal summon for example. You could even bring Zephraf out and if you can replace that scale you can get your double pendulum summon and Zephraf's effect to tribute off to summon another Zephraxi from the deck and this is 8000 on board right here. So although 
our opening of just Zephraf and a low scale generating two layers of disruption is not really that powerful considering the other decks out there for example Zodiac a single rep here can generate two disruptions so that's one card for two disruptions which is definitely better than two cards for two disruptions the true value of this play lies within the pendulum mechanic itself being able to pendulum summon Zephyr new turn after turn after turn really gives this deck a strong sustain game instead of having to go out of your way and make cards such as Digustal Emerald to reset your engine. Also Zephraf being able to put a Zephyr into the extra deck every turn makes this deck slightly stronger against Solemn Strike compared to traditional Pendulum decks. Now Solemn Strike is still going to negate the whole Pendulum Summon which will set you back a turn but you're always going to have the Zephyr new in your extra deck to Pendulum Summon every turn so you're not affected by the advantage aspect of Solemn Strike only the time aspect of Solemn Strike. Now another combo this deck can pull out is the Zephraf and one card thing long combo. So it's another two card combo and this can branch out into two different results. So we're gonna go ahead and activate our Zephraf and use this effect. It's good to use Zephraf before your other Raptor in this case since if they ogre the Zephraf, you can just go ahead and make your Dinglong searching 9 pillars. If you've already summoned the Oviraptor before the Zephraf and made Dinglong and search your scale, and then your Zephraf gets Ghost Ogred, you won't have that 9 pillars to fall back on. But Zephraf can put one of two things into the extra. You can either put a Zephyr New into the extra, or a Zephyr and Pillar into the extra. Now the Zephyr New into the extra is very straightforward. We're going to normal the Oviraptor, miscellaneous, miscellaneous, summons Aeolo, synchro, for Dinglong, and Dinglong is going to search our low scale, since the Frath has made itself a high scale. Activate that, Pendulum summon the Zephyr new, search 9 pillars, this is very standard, you could choose to leave your field at this to play around kaijus since if you only leave out one yangzing and it gets kaijued it not only turns off your nine pillar but also the zephyr war but alternatively you could also synchro these off depending on what yangzings you run in the stack you can summon different things here obviously for example if you run both chiwen and bian you could use dinglong to dump chiwen this makes yazi Dinglong floats into Dinglong floats into like a Suwani when nine pillars pop Yazi. We can get our Chiwen and our Bian. Synchro for Dinglong and then Synchro for Baxia. Very standard plays. We've gone over these plays extensively in previous videos. So this is the Yang Zing side of things. But personally, I favor running a minimal. Yang Zing count somewhere between 0 to 3 main deck non Zephyr Yang Zings. Since at the end of the day, they are all normal summons and can contribute to brick hands. So, assuming we're running 0 non Zephyr Yang Zings, we can extend this play by using Dinglong to dump Zephraxi, making it level 3, synchroing it off into a Chao Fing which has both light and earth attributes attached to it. Now the earth is very relevant for, for Zodiacs as well as any decks splashing a Zodiac engine. Now light, Chelfing, and then the Chelfing is going to float into a second Zephyr New since we want that Zephyr New to be popped with 9 pillars on our opponent's turn. So we can search the Zephyr War and use that on our opponent's turn as well. If our Zephyr New does get Kaijued, we still can use 9 pillars to pop Zephraxi if we want to keep the Chaofeng or if Chaofeng is not doing a lot you can pop the Chaofeng off as well and Chaofeng can also generate a second negate in the form of God Ash or Ghost Ogre Now the other option I mentioned for the Overwrap the Zephraf opening was putting a Zephram Pillica into the extra deck 
So here, obviously, after resolving miscellaneous source, our thing long is going to have to search the high scale since Zephraf is now the low scale. Uh, so activate Zephra new thing long is going to make herself level three by dumping Zephraf C into the graveyard. Next, we're going to Pendulum Summon Zephram Pillica, and its effect brings back Zephraxi. From here, we can access the Zodiac Engine by overlaying for Invoker, detach Summoning Rap here, summon some more Rap here's, etc. Now, this combo is especially good if you naturally opened the Nine Pillars and didn't have to search one, since you know our level three thing long. And the rap here can make Yazi, Ding Long can float into Zephyr New, and then we have the pillars to pop the Zephyr New. And of course, when Zephyr New is popped, we have the Zephyr Wall to go with our double Zephyr scales to pop something more on their turn. And then we're also going to have at least a Dryadent on the field as well for another pop. So, which combo you do is heavily dependent on what exactly you have in your hand in addition to this two card opening. Or how you got to these two cards. So, for example, if the opening was either Oracle and Oviraptor, or Providence to search Oracle and Oviraptor, the combo can be different yet again. So, Oracle for Zephrath, Zephrath for Zephram Pelica, Oviraptor for Ding Long. Ding Long searches out high skill, Ding Long makes itself level 3, Pendulum Summon Zephram Pelica, bringing back the Zephraxi. Now because we have the Oracle, we can Synchro our level 3 Ding Long and Zephram Pelica for Stardust Charge Warrior. Ding Long is going to have to be Chainlink 1 in this case, since it was sent to the graveyard first. Stardust Charge Warrior to draw 1 is going to be Chainlink 2, and Oracle of Zephra to stack a card is going to be Chainlink 3. So as the chain resolves backwards, we can stack Maxi to the top of our deck. Stardust Charge Warrior draws that immediately, and Ding Long is going to float into another Zephraxi, which then in turn accesses Zodiac Engine, overlaying for Invoker. So this same opening hand can lead to a lot of different things. Just as another example, in say, a sided game, you could get this two card opening to do something else yet again. So Invoker Rap here. So you know at this point we have our level 3 Ding Long and our Rap here. We could go ahead and synchro for Ancient Fairy Dragon, pop our Oracle, gain a thousand life points and search any floodgate uh, field spell in the game. For example Necro Valley or more relevant this format, a uh, zombie world that stops the whole entire true Draco tributing mechanic. Ding Long, of course, is going to float into a Zephyr New, and then we can complete the Zodiac half of things. Uh, search the Whiptail, make out Dryadent. Dryadent can pop out Zephyr New, and Zephyr New can search either Pillars, or if we don't have a Providence in the graveyard, we can search Providence into War. Uh, which gives us a layer of protection, of course, unless it's Necro Valley over here. But if it's Zombie World, for example, it gives us another layer of protection on our scales. And Zephyr War can do the disrupting, but we can search nine pillars. It's gonna get rid of one of our scales, which is unfortunate. It does make this board stronger against mass removal, as well as protect whatever Floodgate fuel spell we have from things like Cosmic Cyclone. This is also one of those rare times where Divine Strike is better than Nine Pillars, although this niche scenario probably still doesn't warrant a spot in the main deck for Divine Strike. Cyclone, the Dryadent pop is going to naturally protect, for example, our Zombie World from their Dragonic Diagram, which has the potential to pop a set Heritage or Disciples, which can pop the Zombie World. So after siding, if you sided a Floodgate Spell Spell, you can do this as well. It's a very open-ended combo. If you have the space for another rank 4, such as Tornado Dragon or Emerald, you can make that as well. You just need to do everything in a slightly different order. 
So, at this point, after summoning a rep here, we're not going to synchro immediately, we can summon the Chakanine, bring back the rep here, and then synchro with the rep here that can't be overlaid. Dinglong floats, Ancient Fairy Dragon, search for whatever fuel spell we want. Brawl Bull search, Trident Pop, search whatever trap we want. And then you can use Ancient Fairy Dragon's effect to special summon the level 4 you searched off Brawl Bull. And then overlay for an additional rank 4, such as Emerald or whatever, if you have the space for it. I don't have the space for it, so I won't be able to do this part of the combo. It's quite intensive because you need to run at least for Dryden to still have a material under it after all of this. You need the space for the Ancient Fairy Dragon, Invoker, as well as another rank 4, plus all of the synchros that you're planning to run. And since we've already touched on Zodiacs, we might as well finish this video with another Zodiac based combo. So this is a very standard rap here plus level 1 tuner combo. Doesn't really matter how you access it, you can open rap here plus Miscellaneousaurus for example, or Barrage plus Jurake Olo for example. It's different ways to access this, but just taking the rap here, Miscellaneousaurus, normal summon rap here, probably not a good idea to use this effect unless you have a follow up play such as a Zodiac. Barrage if they ogre your rap here. But if you do have a follow up play like Barrage, you can use rap here to thin your deck by dumping your additional barrages. Since the Zodiac engine in your deck shouldn't be that big, so if this combo resolves, your barrages should be dead. But if it's just these two cards, it's good to play it safe and not play into ogre. Uh, summon another rap here from the deck. Miscellaneousaurus is going to summon the level 1 tuner. Chakanine. Summons the rap here, the synchro for Dinglong. Dinglong searches 9 pillars. Again, depending on the rest of your hand and or depending on what you want to achieve, the combo can start to diverge from here. I won't go through all of the possible lines of play from this point. Assuming we just open these two cards you know, and we don't we didn't naturally open a 9 pillars or something and we want to have at least one 9 pillars, it's a good idea to search the 9 pillars at this point. Robo. Going to search our low scale Dragoons of Draconia. The Dinglong, again, depending on what Yang Zings you run, you can make it whatever level you want. If you run the random Swanee, for example, then we can go ahead and make the Omega. But assuming we're not running any non Zephyr Yang Zings, we are limited to levels 6, 3, and the natural 5, which makes level 10, 9, or 7 synchros. Now if you know your opponent is weak against the Light Chow Fing, we can just go ahead and make the Light Chow Fing. Ding Long floats down into Zephyr New. And then we're going to make our Trident and pop the Zephyr New. This lets us search Providence. Providence for Oracle. Oracle for Zephrath. Zephrath can put any 7 scale Zephyr into the extra deck. For example, another Zephyr New. We're going to set our low scale and then Pendulum summon them. Now they're not going to get the effect since we already used the effect of Zephyr New this turn when we popped it with Dryden earlier. But we already have the 9 pillars from Ding Long, which is very useful to trigger Zephyr New's effect on our opponent's turn. Now unfortunately, this is not a Zephyr scale, so this is the problem of running non-Zephyr scales. If we search Zephyr War, we can't use it on our opponent's turn, which is why I say this combo can be played out differently at the Dinglong point. You know, if we naturally open the 9 pillars, then Dinglong could have searched the scale instead, and Brawl can search a whip tail instead, for example, so that when we pop the Zephyr New, we can search the Zephyr War, and then the Zephyr War can pop you know, either the other Zephyr New or the Ark of Zephyr to pop a card on their field. But if we didn't naturally open anything cool, after popping the Zephyr New, we'll probably search a Zephyr Providence to guarantee a play next turn. And again, throughout this combo, we searched the Oracle of Zephyr through popping the Zephyr New. So instead of Chalfing here, of course, we can also have an Ancient Fairy if we dump a Zephyroxy to make the Dinglong level 3. And then Ancient Fairy Dragon can pop the Oracle of Zephyr. 
access the Necro Valley and stuff like that, for example. Heck, if you're running the Blaze Phoenix FTK, you could probably even transition into the Blaze Phoenix FTK if you wanted to. So again, another very open-ended combo. But that has been the Post-Maximum Crisis Zephyr two-card combo videos. This video has been limited to really just the Zodiacs, Dinosaurs, and Zephyrs in the same deck. What you can accomplish heavily depends on what engines you are exactly running in your deck. True Draco, True Kings are just one example of an additional engine you can run in this deck. For example, this, instead of Necro Valley, could, we could have searched Dragonic Diagram, for example, you know, and add a masterpiece to the field. If you plan on purchasing any cards from Maximum Crisis, or just Yu-Gi-Oh cards in general, be sure to check out YGOsingles.com. By using the discount code MY333YGO, you can get a 5% off your purchase.